Hello YouTube and Facebook. We're back once again. This is Tuesday, October the 4th. We're going to go over some golf cart related questions today. We've divided it into two times a week so our sessions are a little bit shorter now. So anybody in the live chat, uh, feel free to comment, feel free to participate, feel free to ask a golf cart question. Uh, I am Tim. I work for Golf Cart Garage and we've got some questions to regularly scheduled questions and we may interact with some live people so let's get let's go ahead and get started this is episode 61 by the way this is the 61st time we've done it uh, so the garage is now open so let's get started with the questions question number one I purchased a heavy-duty solenoid from your company so I could convert it from 36 to 48 volts I hooked up the wires the same as the 36 volt solenoid and it won't work. I get a click but it doesn't move. I installed the old solenoid as it was wired and it works. There's some Chinese writing on it but no wiring instructions. Okay well I would have a most golf cart related questions that I get it involves me having to ask a question after the question starts and I know that gets frustrating sometimes but I would have questions right off the bat when when you do a 36 volt to 48 volt conversion yes you do have to get you, you don't necessarily have to get a heavy duty solenoid you have to get a 48 volt activated solenoid like so because your old solenoid was 36 volt activated your new solenoid that you have to get is a 48 volt activated solenoid. So that would be my first question. Did you get a 48 volt activated solenoid? And my next question would be, have you already put your 48 volt battery pack in there? Because if you put your 48 volt activated solenoid in there, when you still have your 36 volt battery pack, it's not getting activated on enough voltage. So that could be causing you an issue. You have to have everything in place and it, and it is, you're correct. It wires the exact same way. Now, if you've done everything that I just said, and you've got your 48 volt batteries in there, the solenoid's clicking, but the car doesn't move, then you have a bat, and you put the old solenoid back in and the car does move. Uh, well, when you put the old solenoid back in, did you switch your battery pack back to the 36 volt battery pack? You see what I'm saying? Because your 36 volt solenoid only needs to be used with the 36 volt battery pack. Your 48 volt solenoid needs to only be used with your 48 volt battery pack. That might be where your issue is. So anyway, that would be uh, where I would be leaning toward on that one. Question number two. 2016 EasyGo RXV clicks but won't move. Any thoughts? Could be a number of things, but what I can tell you this, if you if you go to Google, you open up Google's or any search engine, and you start to type in common easy go RXV problems, it will finish the sentence for you. And the, it, there are several, uh, there's, there's lots of info out there. There are lists of common RXV problems. And the two main ones on the list, the two main common RXV problems on that list is solenoid and uh, uh, motor brake that's two of them now it, it could possibly be the controller you know because if your solenoid is clicking that means you're getting power to it so and the thing that's after the solenoid is the controller it could be controller also but the common things is solenoid and just because a solenoid clicks doesn't always mean that it's fine it doesn't always mean that it's good that I've seen it with my own two eyes more than once that it's solenoid's clicking, but it's still messed up. It's still, it's still not a good solenoid. And the solenoid replacement on an RXV is very common. So that might be what you want to look into. Let's see. Number three. Carry all, as you showed me, I checked the batteries. All six show 8.2. After I charge, I slowly ease into the power and it just barely starts to tug, move forward, and as I push the pedal, it starts to chatter or stutter, trying to move. And every now and then, when I do this, it will catch and take off. New solenoid, and of course, clicks before trying to move. 
Please point the disabled vet in the right direction. It's the only way I can get around in my yard. Well, I've, I've said it before. Anytime somebody describes a shudder, a symptom as a shudder, a stutter, or a chatter, it is going to be, I, I, I call it, it's almost always battery related. But when it, that doesn't necessarily mean a battery. It can mean one of your power wires. It means your, in, your big power wire circuit. In other words, every one of your batteries is included in battery related. Every one of your battery cables is included in battery related. If your carry-all has a V-glide where it's got copper contacts going across it, it that could be battery related too. Uh, it's one of, your, what, what are your main power wire connections you know, somewhere. And if, if you're running a V-Glide, then I'd be looking at that. If you're running an M-Core, that's uh, most likely not going to be what it is causing a chatter, a stutter, or a chatter like you described. Uh, I would want to see voltage readings too. I know you gave me a, at rest voltage readings of 8.2. I would want to see voltage readings on each individual battery during the chatter or the stutter because that is a very direct symptom of a battery dropping out. So. I would want each individual battery have a voltmeter on there and then make it stutter. Make it stutter and watch the voltage and see if that voltage drops way down. Because I've seen batteries show 8.2, but as soon as you put them under load, boom, they drop out. Let's see. I'll go over to Facebook real quick and YouTube and see if we've got anything going on there. Doesn't look like it. Number four, I have a 2014 RXV with Mad Jack's light kit. The right rear brake light stays on all the time. Any idea what might be causing this? Well, different light kits have different ways that they have incorporated into their kits. They're, they use different uh, ways of uh, turning the brake lights off. Like, you know, because you have to set the parking brake. And when you set the parking brake, you, you, you know, the brake pedal's down. And so the brake, when the brake pedal goes down, that's normally what turns the brake lights on. on. So they have, have to, they had to create different methods of uh, making sure that they don't just stay on all the time. Now, one of the methods is two micro switches. You know, you, you when you hit the brake pedal, you push one micro switch every time you just hit the brake pedal and let off. And when you touch the parking brake, it clicks another micro switch, which turns the brake lights out. That's one method. Now there's another method that I think Magjax uses, in fact, where it's a timer. You know, you, you, is, if the brake lights stay on for, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's four minutes. So you, you got to leave them on for four minutes to see if the timer's working and going out. Now the fact that you only have one doing it, that's the, the only way that that could be happening is if you've got if something is messed up in your wiring harness or you've got a brake light out on one side and then your other one is the timer just not working so i'd have to i'd look into that let's see we've got some over here on facebook we've got southern roots outdoors how's it going southern roots outdoors glad to have you thanks for participating I have a 2010 RX V 48 volts. I had issues with the cart barely moving. I replaced with Navitas controller, charge port, both pedal switches, finally replaced encoder bearing, and cart worked. Brake went bad, and now cart moves again. Do I need to replace encoder bearing again? Brake went bad, and now cart barely moves again. Okay, finally replaced encoder bearing and cart work. Brake went bad and now cart barely moves again. It's very possible. I, I have I have heard people do that, that you know, that have to go through that. That's what I was saying earlier about common RXV problems. Uh, but you're you're talking about the encoder, the that's that's another one. You know, that's another one that it was would it would cause it to barely move. So yeah, it's very possible that you may have to do that. I feel bad for you. I mean, it's, I'm sure RXVs are good, but they 2010, you know, they had only been out two years at that point, so they might not have had all the bugs worked out of them yet at that, at that point. Let's 
Let's see, I think I'm on number five. How difficult is it to replace brakes on a 2008 Yamaha 48 volt car? Well, if you have, if you have any automotive experience at all with brakes, it's the old style brake shoes and brake drum setup. And it's, uh, it comes apart. It's got a few springs. Uh, it, what you can do is you, when you take the hub off, take a picture of it before you do anything. And uh, that way you'll have a reference to, to put everything back together in case you get lost or whatever. You know, where you're, you know what you're trying to achieve. It's got several parts in there, but none of them are real complicated. So it's not very difficult. Uh, you, you can do it if you have any mechanical ability and, and a smartphone that can take a good picture. Let's see, number six. Club car has 44 volts, but will not run. Batteries may be the issue. Charged up to 44, but barely runs. Uh, wait a second. Well, I can tell you this, 44 volts is not enough. It's not, it's, it's not going to run uh, very good at all with 44 volts. That may be just enough to make it crawl. You have to understand, this is what a lot of people don't understand. There's a big difference in a 48 volt pack. You know, your, your, your whole battery pack is supposed to be a 48 volt battery pack. It's supposed to have 48 volts. There's a big difference between 48 volts and like 51. And it doesn't sound like a big difference, but that's the difference between completely dead and fully charged. Uh, so the fact that you're 44, you're beyond completely dead. I mean, they, they in fact, that's probably doing some, your batteries don't like to get that low. It can, they can suffer some damage if they get that low. So you need to get those batteries up to at least 48 volts before your car is going to run normally. Let's see. Southern Roots Outdoors, should I replace motor with Navitas motor or would that help any if RXV motor works? I would replace it with the Navitas motor. Uh, I've, heard, I've heard very good things about the entire Navitas setup uh, that the people that have gone through the trouble and done the complete swap over to the Navitas system. I've heard very good things about it. So that's what I would do. Let's see. Number seven. Well, let me check Facebook. I hadn't looked at Facebook. All right, we're good there. When should A arm bushings be replaced? Well, the what what happens over time is what I've seen in older cars is all bushings. You got bushings in your leaf springs, you got bushings in, in your A-arms up front, your, your steering uh, area. If, you're, if your car has A-arms, you've got bushings there. Over time, those bushings, they do become, they become brittle and they will get to the point where they'll crack and even pieces of them will fall out. Like I've, I've heard people, I've had cars come in my shop where people complain about a, they got a bumping metal to metal noise and I'll go back and look at their leaf springs and the bushings for the leaf springs are gone. They're not, they're not even there anymore because they've already get become brittle and cracked and just fell out. So they got metal to metal bouncing up and down every time they hit a bump on their leaf springs. Well, it's the same way in the front. If, if you're, if you look at them and expect them and inspect them and you see any type of cracks or any pieces missing, then they probably all need to be replaced. But they'll last a long time before that happens. Number eight, my 2007 club car precedent 48 volts sometimes just loses power and locks up the drive wheels, jarring the car. Then most of the time continues on. Sometimes it will not restart and I have to do several things to try to get it to going again. I go from run to tow and back. I stomp on the accelerator pedal and sometimes that is what it takes. And other times I just let it sit for a while and come back. Uh, 
those those intermittent failures are, are very hard to diagnose so over the years I've tried to come up with a system to kind of make it a little bit easier for me to diagnose that when a cart would come into my shop so what I started doing is I started just doing one thing every time it fails like any time it failed in other words don't do the switch and the accelerator pedal just do one of those things and continue just to do one of those things like I have had people tell me that their club car was down and if they just stomp on the accelerator pedal several times that it will get back going again well that that's a good move and that's a good isolation technique because you know now that it's most likely going to be the M core that's causing you a problem that that's the intermittent device is the M core but if you do two or three different things you don't know which one you did you know that, that actually helped you or even made things worse so in your case, I would be suspecting that you have an intermittent M core. Number nine. I have a 2004 gas cart that will not start when the pedal is pushed. Is there a switch at the pedal and its location? Well, I don't know what kind of cart you have, but yes, there is a switch. Your accelerator pedal on all gas cars, the first thing that it activates is a, is a switch somewhere. So depending on which car you have, like with a Yamaha, it's right there at the gas pedal. It's a big, big old pedal, it's called a pedal stop switch. If your car's a Yamaha and an easy go, it's going to be located inside a box where you can see your rod, your accelerator rods going in the box and you open up the top of the box and then there, there's some micro switches in there. Uh, club car, depending on which one you have, which year, it's either going to be a switch in your V-Glide, it's going to be a switch in your M-Core. So yes, there is a switch and that's what you need to be looking for in your case because the solenoid has to click. This switch is part of the activation circuit for that solenoid. Solenoid has to click to get that starter generator to turn over. So you're, you're looking in the right place or you're looking in the right direction. Let's see here. Number 10, gonna be the last regularly scheduled question. I have a club car and ever since I got a Summit 2 charger for my car, it is slower and, cart and can't go uphill like it used to. I've had it for a year and it's been like, like that since then. Well, that's definitely should not be the case. I mean, just because you got a stomach too, it shouldn't uh, make your cart slower by any means. Uh, so there, you some you got some issue there with your batteries, I would think. So let's uh, we'd, we'd have to start by getting some voltage readings on your batteries at rest, you know, without the summit two running, and then we're gonna get some voltage readings uh, after the summit two is is you know while it's running and see if your batteries are actually getting up to the voltage that they need to be. Uh, if your car is a 36 volt car, your, your battery voltage while it's on charge should get up to 46, 48 volts. If your car is a 48 volt car, your battery voltage while it's on charge should get up to 60 volts almost or even over. I've seen them go over 60 volts before the charger will shut off. So we need to check that just to make sure that you're actually, you know, your batteries are allowing the charger to raise the voltage up that high. Or, or you, because you could have a battery that's, that's keeping that from happening. You could have just one battery that's keeping that from happening. Well, that's about it. Let's see here. Southern Roots Outdoors says, thank you for taking time to answer questions. You're quite welcome, Southern Roots Outdoors. Thank you for joining in in the chat and participating. That's always a, a good thing. All right. Let's see. That's going to be it for those questions. I'll check Facebook and YouTube one more time before we go. Uh, I am Tim. We go live Tuesdays and Thursdays on Facebook and YouTube. We are live uh Every Tuesday and Thursday, we split it up. We, we split it up. We used to do one session a week. Now we do two sessions a week, a little bit shorter. I am part of the Gearheads on Demand service that is offered by Golf Cart Garage. I work for Golf Cart Garage. Uh, the Gearheads on Demand is a service that we offer where you can set up an appointment to speak with me about your golf cart related issue. Uh, you, you, if you're interested in that, 
just click on the link in the description and uh, it, that will take you to the scheduling page and you can schedule a time slot with me and I'll call you at that time slot, whichever one you, you pick. It's all, all automatic software. It's pretty cool. Uh, I, I'll call you and we'll talk about your golf cart related issue one-on-one, -on -one, see if I can help you, see if I can steer you in the right direction, uh, see if I can help you save some money. Uh, let's see. I can also you can also schedule a video with chat with me where I won't call you, but I'll send a link to your telephone, and all you do is you click on the link, and then I can look through your camera and see what you're working on. Uh, sometimes I might need to see that, but most of the time a phone call is fine. So anyway, if you're interested in that, click on the link in the description. Also, if you like this content, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, that would be good. That that helps us out. That keeps us going. That uh, that keeps my job actually. So feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I want to thank everybody for this watching or this, this, uh, this in the live watching. I want to thank Southern Outdoors for participating and asking a few questions. And let's see. It looks like that's going to be about it for this week. Yep, that's going to be it. All right. Well, I will see everybody on Thursday, uh, Thursday the 6th for episode 62. See you then. Garage is now closed.